So I'm always looking for cool things to do with CSS3 and I was in Chrome looking at my extensions and I happened to notice this little guy right here in Chrome. I was like, hey, that's actually kind of cool. Nice little animation, kind of hover over, pretty simple stuff. And so I broke it apart and just saw what they did and made it so that it worked in all browsers or at least most browsers. You guys are gonna find that IE is the culprit in most cases. So it's you can get it to work, um, but it takes a little bit of, of work. This is actually using a series of CSS3 uh, transforms and transitions to get it to work, but it's pretty easy. Now, if you're new to this stuff, you you can find that one of the great sites, one of the sites I use all the time is called caniuse.com, and it, it, it lets you figure out what is supported where. So for instance, I, when I tell you that this is gonna use like a, a transform, so I click on transform and you can see exactly what browsers support it, what versions of browsers, what, what are called vendor prefixes are necessary or you know used in this case. And then there's some other ones we could use as well, but you'll see like MS is a vendor prefix. So we can get it to work in IE9. All right, how do we do it? Well, let me get back over to Dreamweaver, over to Dreamweaver, and we'll take a look and you'll see that the code in the left over here is what it takes to work. I'll go to live view and you'll see over here, I know it's really small and I apologize for this, but I hover the trash can and you'll see there it goes. Now the HTML, this is gonna be an HTML5 document, okay? So you can see a doc type of HTML, pretty simple stuff. I put the CSS in the document just so that we can keep it all together and you can see it all. If I look at the HTML down here, you'll see I just created a div. Now they used, if you go to the Chrome website and go to the Chrome code, they have a button in there, which is fine. That way you could click and do something. But I just said, let's make it a div. And then down in, inside that div rather, I've got two span tags, which they created. And the span tags, really simple stuff. There's nothing inside of them. It just has a class called lid and a class called can. So the trash is the div that is out around everything, I guess you, if you can say. The reason why we do that is so that when you hover over this div, this trash can div, this trash div, it's gonna allow something to, to happen to either the lid, the can, or both. And we're gonna make something happen to the lid. All right, so let's get to the start. I'm gonna get to the start HTML over here. And this is what we're starting with. Like I said, I created the div, have two span tags inside, and you can create just about anything. You can create two other divs, lots of things you can do there. For the trash itself, for the div trash style, I just put a position relative and put a width on it. Position relative means that when we have the span tags inside or other div tags inside, we can position them absolutely relative to the trash can. I know it sounds kind of weird. Got two styles here called can and lid. And you can see I kind of grouped the selectors there. And I had a background image that I stuck in there called trash.ping. That, that image, you can use anything you want, but that's a teeny little trash can that they had, and I borrowed it from them. And then I put a border on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split and go to live view and refresh, and you'll see that there is what it looks like right now, okay? It's basically because the span tags have nothing inside of them. So what we need to do is we need to kind of work on these. So we're gonna take the can and the lid, both of these objects, and we're gonna add some properties. So I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna say, let's position them absolutely. So I'll say position absolute, and I'm gonna use Dreamweaver's kind of code assist here. And we'll say from the left, and I'm just gonna kind of move them inside that trash div a little bit. So I'll say from the left, we'll go, I don't know, and I'm just throwing numbers out here. And then from the top, we'll go two picks. All right, and I take a look up here, and you're gonna see, oh wow, okay, it's moving, but now it's really small. Okay, once we put a position on it, it's gonna, take a, a size that we need here. We need some kind of width and height. So I'll put a width on these. I'll say like uh, 14. And if you have a larger image, you're gonna obviously set the width and height to match the larger uh, image you have. And there we go, you can see. Okay, well, I've got two, now there's two of these span tags that are stacked on top of each other. You can see I've got them cannon lid. So they're both a width of 14 and a height of six. I made it so that they share those properties, but we need to go to the can itself, the larger one, make it taller and, and do a couple little different things here. So if I go to can, I'll go right in there. What I wanna do is I wanna change the height. So we're gonna set the height to be a little bit bigger. And you notice I'm getting lazy here. I don't put spaces or whatever. And you can say, okay, well, now you can see that the can itself is underneath. That's fine, because it's secondary here, uh, but it's taller. Okay, 
Now I can make it a little narrower if I want to. So I can say width of, uh, I don't know, maybe like 11 picks, something like that. Make it a little narrower. That's fine. And then move the background image. The background image is that trash ping. So I'll just kind of reposition the background image. So I'll say um, background position. And I'm cheating here, I know. Background position. I'll move it to the left. So I'll say minus one picks and then move it up a little bit, minus four picks. And you'll see it's going to move that little trash can image in there. There we go. And you can also position it like bottom left or just try some different things there. Now what we need to do is we need to take the trash can itself and push it down. So I'll come in here and say, all right, margin. Um, I don't know what we're going to do here. Four, I'll, I'll push it down four pixels, which is almost the height of the other one. And then from the right, we'll do like two picks, zero picks, one picks, two picks, something like that. Just try a couple different things and you'll see that, okay, we just kind of pushed it around a little bit using margin. There we go. Not too bad. Now you guys, I stuck a border on here just so you could see it. So on the cannon lid, I'm gonna get rid of that now. Actually, you know what, let's keep it. That way you can, it, it helps to see things uh, a little bit later on. All right, cool, we got that. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the, the magic on it. We're gonna say, when we hover over the trash can, the larger div here, I want the lid to rotate. So I've already got the style created. You can see this is what the style looks like. You're saying, when you hover over this class or this object with the class applied, hover, space, dot lid, we're gonna affect the lid. Right here, it's gonna say, okay, what do we do when we hover over the trash can? Well, we're gonna rotate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in um, what's called a, well, let's do this. <laughs> I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna say, we're gonna put in what's called a transform, okay? I'm gonna put in the CSS3, the accepted standard, uh, well, almost. And I'll say um, transform, and what am I doing here? Rotate, sorry, rotate. So I'm gonna say, let's rotate it. And we're gonna go with minus 45 and we put in a degree right there. So we'll do something like that. Now this, this is telling it that we're gonna rotate the lid when we hover over the trash can. You're gonna find that these tra the transform property, you can do tons of stuff with this, but we need vendor prefixes to get this to work. So vendor prefixes, I'm sure a lot of you already know. Um, let me do this, I'm gonna, are things like this. So we actually put in like the WebKit transform. That's for Chrome, you know, Chrome, different browsers like that. Um, and then we can put in, let's see, a, um, we'll put in Opera. Opera's got one too. And then we can put in, there's a bunch of, a bunch of these we can put in, but I'm going to put in a um, Mozilla then. So like Firefox type thing. Okay, there we go. Now if I come over here and I try it, I'm going to click on it, you'll see what it does. Bam, 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 bam. It's going to rotate on its center, which is cool. Let me go take a look at it in the browser. I'll go to Chrome, save the start file. Same thing, bam, bam, cool, rotate. Now, let me go back. And you, you guys are gonna find that there's lots of websites that will create the code for you. There's tons of them, like this one's uh, kind of interesting, but it's called the IE CSS3 Transforms Translator. You can give it a rotate, you can say, type in what you want here, like minus 45 deg degrees and put in a bunch of things. You'll find that you can do lots of things, transforms, and it will give you all the different vendor prefixes and the actual transform you can put in there. And you gotta give it a width and height too, which we already have. But So there's lots of websites like this that can give you the code already. Okay, now we need to make it so that it rotates around a certain point. So I wanna make sure that it rotates roughly around the lower left corner or something like that of the lid. So we've got the style here, a style here for the lid, and we're gonna tell it what point that we want it to rotate around. And what we're gonna use, let me keep it a little bit um, straight here. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use something called transform origin. This is pretty cool. And it you can use it in a lot of major browsers, a lot of the newer browsers. It, IE, you can get it to work in an explorer. It's not gonna work in a lot of versions of IE, uh, but there's workarounds and I'll point you to them if you really wanna go there. Um, anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up what's called the uh, the transform origin. So we're gonna say transform origin. Now this is the, the accepted value here. I'm gonna say transform origin. And then what we can put is we can put a value. We're gonna actually gonna put the X value and the Y value. We can put just one if we want to, uh, but we're gonna put in two. So we could say something like um, uh, left, bottom, something like that. 
and say that that's the transform origin. You can also put in percentages if you want to. I'm going to start here, and this is this is kind of the annoying part, but I'm going to put in the um, the WebKit. So we're going to put in the WebKit because I'm going to go to Chrome with it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like in Chrome. Then we got to put the other vendor prefixes. So let me go out to Chrome, and you're going to see what it does. Cool, not too bad. Now I don't want it to go exactly around the lower the lower left point there. And you guys, there's some fixing I need to do here as far as heights and different things, but Hopefully you're getting the idea. You can go in and, and massage that a little bit. Now what we can do is we can also come in here, instead of saying a generic left bottom, you can say for the X, we want it to be, let's say, um, 0%. And then for the Y, I want to start, so the X starts from the left, left side over here. The Y starts from the top. So how far down do we want to rotate on? I could say let's rotate at 80%. So that's 80% from the top of the object. That's the point where we're going to rotate. Let me go look at it in the browser, and you'll see a little different. There we go. Okay. You can play around with it. Do whatever you want. All right. Now, I want to get rid of the border. I've got the border on here just so you can see the, both the two objects. And then I'm going to go take a look at it again. And you can see we're getting there. Not too bad. Now we need to smooth it out. We need to make it have a smooth transition. This is where it gets, you know, there's a couple more things we need to do here. If you come in here, you're going to see, okay. When we hover over the lid, we're going to start here. When we hover over the trash can, rather, and the lid does the rotate, we want to tell it to actually transition smoothly. Okay, so we're going to use the property called transition. You can see right here. So if I come in here, and we're going to put in, once again, we're going to put in the vendor prefixes and all that stuff. We can say this. This is kind of interesting. You can say, okay, for the transition, what I want you to do is I want you to take the transform we're doing here, transform, and I want you to, to give it a, uh, let's tell it to, to, to either ease and or give it a time. How long is it going to take to do that? And there's tons of things you can do here. I'll say, okay, the transform, I want it to take uh, 250 milliseconds. And there's lots of ways to, to write this or several ways to write this, I should say. Now I'm going to put in the vendor prefix here, which is WebKit because I'm going to go to Chrome. And I need to make sure just like this, I need to make sure I put the other vendor prefixes in. So I'll go in here and let's go preview in Chrome. And you can see eh, it's not quite doing it. I must have messed something up here. Now the mistake I always make, I'm back here. The mistake I always make is I say, okay, grab the transform and do that. But this is not specifically for Chrome. Chrome doesn't understand this yet, some versions of Chrome. We need to tell it to be the WebKit transform. So we're saying for the transition to happen, I want you to take that WebKit transform and rotate and take this long to do it. So this needs to actually be, I always screw this up, WebKit transform. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me go try it out. I got to go to Chrome because it's WebKit based. Zoop. Cool. Bam. Zoop. Bam. Now, we got to do the rest of the vendor prefixes so you can get it to work in, in most other browsers. So I'm going to come out here and copy this. Paste, paste, paste. And what we'll do here is um, I'm going to go in and say Opera, Mozilla, and then the regular one. You're going to find, you guys, that sometimes we don't have to do some of these just because um, it, they don't require it anymore. As a matter of fact, one thing I, I did not do is one, I, I didn't do this one up here, which I need to do as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, paste. This is going to be, uh, let's say, that's going to be Opera. That's going to be Mozilla. We do have a Microsoft one, and we have the original Transform. So I'm going to go Opera, and I try to keep them all in the same order. It's not exactly necessary here but there we go so you can see a Microsoft one that's for transform origin cool now we can also add a Microsoft uh, vendor prefix for the rotate if we want to so if I'll grab this one copy and paste we can also have Microsoft now this is for IE9 I believe to get it to work there we go we got the rotates we got the transforms we're doing pretty good here the last thing we want to do is when somebody hovers over it and then they move their mouse off, I want it to be a smooth transition as well. So in order to do that, we're going to copy these transitions here, the smooth transitions on the hover lid, copy those, and put them on the lid up here. I know this, this may not make much sense, but let me paste them here. What we're essentially saying is, okay, when you hover over the trash can div, do this to the lid. Transform it, rotate it, and tell it 
that transformation to be to take this long, which we can add easing and all sorts of things. Over here, we're saying, okay, here's the origin of the object and what we're going to transform around. And then when somebody moves their mouse off, I want you to take that transformation, once again, transformation here, the rotation, and we're going to go back to square one, back to zero, if you will, zero degrees, taking this long. So let's try it out. I'm going to go out and take a look. Bam, bam. And there we go. That is the trash can. So if I take a look at the Google Chrome page, they tweaked it a little bit, did a little different, but pretty much the same thing. So that's your code. That's how it works. And there's a lot of little tweaky things, a lot of ways you can get this to work probably a little better than I have. That's totally fine. Um, but I wanted to show you a cool way to be able to create a little animation on Hover.